Hello my brothers and sisters of the Order, I am Templar, and today I will be talking to you all about the history and origins and evolution of the Celtic arms and armor. Now, how should I actually start this video for that? Well, this type of form in history can easily be summoned up with the forms of history. For example, let's take a look into the Bronze Age culture, of which we can take so dear. Now, if we take a look at the Bronze Age culture, for example, it's actually stated that the Celts of the Bronze Age mainly actually had types of different arms and armor. However, they later on evolved from their different points of view. For example, let's take a look at this little fingering here, for example. As you can see, the Celtic warrior is wearing a type of helmet that's known as a crested helm, and as well, even a form of padded armor lined with a form of boiled ox or even some form of other boiled leather armor which would have been placed over the padded armor, making it highly resistant to a thrust and cutting blow from a said opponent. As well, this type of a design is extremely accurate to its design level, of which is really impressive of how this little figurine is actually incredibly accurate. In fact, this type of design is what the Celts would have mostly time worn, especially if they were a foot soldier. However, it is stated, though, that the Celts of this timeline might have actually been inspired by other cultures, and it later on created types of cuirass armor in general. However, this was mostly used by noblemen. How? But now, let's go back to the regular foot soldiers, shall we? Now, as we see, this foot soldier is also carrying a battle axe. However, this figurine is not showing a historical form. But in truth, the Celts would have actually used axes during the Bronze Age period, but later when the Iron Age came around, it stated the Celts later on replaced their axe for the sword, which is kind of idealism of region. In fact, it's actually stated that the Celts were extremely wealthy, so this explains it. So why don't I get through this a little bit more so that way you can understand it. In fact, take a look at this image of Celtic swords, for example, and you could see my point. These are actually Celtic Bronze Age swords, that of which actually later on evolved into patterns like this. Now, as we can see, this is really impressive by detail, and of which explains of how the Celts would have dressed like and well would have used. Now, this is a Celtic-type hexagonal tower shield. These shields were normally found during the Bronze Age culture of the Celts. However, it's actually seen that the Celts later on uh, designed different and bigger, wider shields in order to protect the entire body, rather than just a small amount of human body itself. But then, let's also talk about the cuirass. It's actually stated that the Celts during the Bronze Age actually created a type of forms of armor from cuirass armor, pretty much probably copying it from other cultures like the Greeks. However, it's stated that the, these uh, types of cuirass armor were actually impressively designed, mainly do not just look well like good plate of armor, but as well designed of which kind of nicknamed a uh, Hallstatt design of which most of these were actually discovered in the region of the Hallstatt culture. Now, this is really impressive as you can see this type of armor. Now, that brings me to the culture of the Celts from their homeland, known as the Hallstatt. Now, here as we see, the Hallstatt culture is one of the most famous in general, and of which is really impressive. For example, let's take a look at this Hallstatt helm. Now, this is a really cool helmet. Why? Here's the thing. Uh, what does this helmet look like? That's right, this looks like a medieval kettle hat helmet, and if we know from historical preferences, the kettle hat helm is later on used by the Brits and American forces during World War I and II, and of which these helmets are extremely cool. Now, this design helmet is stated to have been one of the most impressive by far. In fact, this in general design one, as you can see, this actually shows it with a crest upon the helm of where this said design was supposed to have been, been glued. In fact, some historians state that this that the Celts might have adopted this from the Greek regions, however, we're not understood or understand whether or not that's true or not. Of which, we still don't know if that's even possible or accurate. However, it is stated though that this helmet was used primarily, mainly used by many Celts. In fact, there were many design shapes of this Hallstatt helm, and of which are really impressive. In fact, some of them have the so-called bell-shaped Hallstatt helm, the tower-shaped Hallstatt helm, or in general the chieftain helm of the Hallstatt. And now there are many helmets that are with this design, yes. However, this one right here, as you can see with this so, uh, figure bust, for example, actually shows of a Celtic nobleman, for example, 
wearing this said helmet to make himself be known to his allies. Which is really cool by general, and of which I do like this design, of which it does show of like how the Cubs would have worn. Now, let's take a image to this person here, who is actually wearing historical accurate type Hallstatt armor. And in fact, this is a group in the said region of, uh, I want to say Germany, that of which dress in this type of form for reenactment purposes. And of which, these groups actually do have historical facts. Now, as you can see, he's wearing a cuirass plate armor, and as well with a Hallstatt helm, and as well an oval-shaped scutum shield. These oval-shaped scutum shields would have actually been lightweight in design. However, there's also this person here who is wearing a desert regular oval shield, and of which is probably a foot soldier. Now, that is really impressive by far. And as well, you can see his axe head that he is using is a Bronze Age era type axe head of which is really awesome as well. Now, off to this next image, we show another Celtic warrior. Instead of wearing a full don on cuirass, he's wearing what you call a chest, a chestal breastplate cuirass, of which this was kind of a weird design by far, but of which, at the time, it stated that this would have been strapped on, and of which was an early version of a lightweight cuirass. Now, as well, he's also wearing a said crested helm, these type of helmets were technically used by the Celts. Now, why would the Celts use these type of helmets in general? Well, technically the crested helm was actually meant to make the person look taller in the distance. So, yeah. However, the Hallstatt crested helm looks something more like this. Not like it just did before. In fact, these type of crested helms were slightly more elevated to the design, making it impossible for said a striking blow onto the head. Which meaning, this type of helmet almost looks like a sh half a Sugarloff helm. Now, let's take a look at the Hallstatt Sword. Now, the Hallstatt Sword is probably one of the most coolest swords in history, and which came up during the time of the Iron Age period. These type of swords were really cool by far. However, the most earliest model of this might have been during the Bronze Age, or Late Bronze Age. Now, these type of swords were mainly used for horse military combat. In other words, these were meant for cutting blows. These weren't meant for thrusting. However, if you did thrust this into somebody, you pretty much would aim for, say, a naked uh, region. In other words, say, like, he has a thigh that's open, and the only thing that's protecting is a small amount of his tunic cloth. Or, in the process, you strike him in the foot, and in the process, goes through the leather and into his uh, aortas. In the process, he technically dies from bleeding out. Now, this is another example of the cuirass armor and including plate and helmet armor that would have been used by the Celts of the Hallstatt region. These helmets are and cuirass are extremely impressive by far in general, which I do like, in which you can see the slight bit of detail on the said cuirass of how these might have looked, of which it is really impressive. Now, take a look at this Hallstatt helm, of which you do see also a little bit of detail. Now, even with the black horse area and such, uh, but yeah, this one is, in generally a very great design, and it does look like a cattle helm, and as well, it looks like a really impressive one by far. But now, that also brings me to another point. In fact, it's even been stated in history books that some historians and archaeologists have actually discovered that some other decorated cuirasses that were used in the Hallstatt region might have actually been covered with leather, in fact, or even padding. Now, why would they do this? Well, I believe it was kind of the weirdest thing in general to keep it away from the weather. In other words, if you were to wear this during, say, a rainy day, at least your armor doesn't get eroded over time. And in fact, most of the time, this plate armor was discovered time and time again. But however, this armor would later on evolve into different types of armor that would have been used in the region of Gaul. In fact, it was stated that Gaul had actually created later on models of armor that would have actually evolved from the Hallstatt region and into the Gallic region. In fact, it's actually stated because of the Celts of Gaul, they later on create a type of helmet known as the Jubiasio Helm or the Celt early Celtic Gallic Helm and as well would even evolve into a helmet known as the Agen Helm. In fact, the Agen Helm is what you might call a type of design helmet. In fact, because of the early Gallic helmet, as I stated before, it later on turns into the Monterifino type helm, or the late Celtic helm. 
Now, this helmet would actually be one of the Celts' most impressive ones, and of which the Romans would even adopt during the time of the Roman Republic. However, it's actually stated that during this timeline, though, the Halstead helm that evolved into these different helms mainly evolved into the said Montefrifo or the Asian helm. And in fact, the Montefriano helm would actually later on evolve into the Port Binia Nubula, or as we call it, or as the Romans call it, the Gallic Helm. And in fact, this Gallic Helm, as you can see here, is probably one of the most impressive by far, and of which actually has a back neck guard, and as well even has multiple type of way of holding and protecting the said skull cap. Now, it's actually stated though that the Celts of Gaul even evolved this sword itself, and in fact made it longer and stronger than its early Hallstatt design. In fact, as you can see in this image, there are hundreds of designs that they would have made from it. However, it's even stated that the Celts of Gaul, who actually created the Latin culture, this is pretty much the culture, as we call it, as the main type of Celtic region, and of which most of the said Celtic arms and armor later on evolved from here, and then later on over time. However, it is stated though, the Celts of Gaul would have actually worn a type of padded armor, mixed in with their leather, mixed in with leather, of which, as you can tell in history books, is kind of the same as their ancestral roots. In fact, take a look at this image here as the Celts of Gaul fighting against the Etruscans, for example, of which they are wearing a mixture of padded and leather uh, type armor with a plate armored helmet. Now as well, it is stated though that later on over time, they would have even evolved into a form of armor known as padded scale armor, of this armor it would have been a mixture of padded armor with scales stolen in and then an overlayer of leather. However, over time, as soon as mail was invented, for example, mail was then turned into with it, and of which this armor would then turn into a mixture and a superb battle ready armor, or what you might call a supreme chieftain armor, or whatever you want to call it. In fact, I just call it a chieftain armor to be precise because I don't want to get myself confused. In fact, this type of armor would pretty much be made of padded armor, then sewn in with the male, with a male type uh, shirt that would have been placed over the padded armor, which would then be sewn in with, of which this armor would have pretty much been riveted male with scale armor, and then an over layer of, of boiled leather, and of which this armor in general would have been impossible to penetrate. In fact, it's even stated in history that a Roman scorpion, for example, couldn't even penetrate this armor, but let alone just bounce off. However, if you were the said person that probably got shot, you pretty much feel as though you got shot by a 50 caliber bullet when you're wearing bulletproof armor and yet you survived. In other words, you pretty much bleed out and die. So, yeah, probably, uh, you technically, it could stop a sword from a gladius, a Roman pilum, but when it comes to a scorpion, it still died from the impact. Still though, this armor was pretty impressive, and I love to see anybody to try and remake this armor. Now, the Celts also of Gaul then created a type of new design of shields. In fact, these are different patterns of shields that of which the Celts of Gaul would have created, from round shields to oval shields to... Uh, hexagonal and so on. In fact, these shields would have technically been used by the Celts of Gaul until their demise by the Roman Empire. However, as we do also see, the Celts would have also used pretty much a lot of design swords. In fact, take a look at this Celtic sword here, beautifully designed by, by far, and of which the really cool part is, this is mostly made from silver, ivory, and as well including with rubies and sapphire. This would have been a beautiful weapon by far, and as well the scabbards would have actually been incredibly detailed with gold and such. In fact, that is really cool by far. However, as we take a look at one of these images, for example, we can actually see another design feature of how the Celtic helmets would have actually evolved. As you can see here, this type of design shows from the original type of Coolis helm that the Celts would have used, and as well also with the Gallic helm, and including a lot of others in the Hallstatt region and such. These would later on evolve to the later Roman helmets that we see here. So yeah, these are kind of impressive by far. Now also, when we also do see a little bit more in detail form in history, 
let's take a look at one of my subscribers who actually is wearing his which sorry if sorry if I took a picture and put it on here but I needed a good detail in which you do actually wear a good type of detailed helmet the Celts would have actually detailed their helms in such fabulous manners and of which this is a really cool part they would have even done something elaborate with them and what do I mean elaborate well take a look at this as you can see, um, the Celts would have actually designed their helmets with such uh, bird-like objects or demons as a Roman state, of which would have actually been impossible to deal with, and as which most historians wonder how they managed to do this, which, lucky for us, we do actually have many types of items that have been left over. In fact, there are little type of spring designs that are stuck in there that help the type of, well, as you can see, the wings of the bird flap which is really cool. But what does evolve from this? Well, let's take a look at the Celt Iberians. In fact, the Celt Iberians do evolve many types of arms and armor. Because of the Celt Iberians, we actually have male armor, which is really cool. In which, if it wasn't for the Celt Iberians, we probably wouldn't have a male or chain mail, as you people put it, in which it was made from riveted mail, not the Romans who made butted mail, which is kind of hilarious if you ask me. In fact, we can also take a look, say, at this image right here. The Celts of Iberia would have actually worn multiple types of armor. Now, as you can see, the Roman soldier he's kneeling, the other two are Celtic warriors, in which they're wearing different types of armor. In other words, they're not, in generally, wearing the same armor, even though their tribal people are technically the same and the region. However, it is stated, though, the Celt Iberians, before making male armor, they would have actually used a light cuirass armor. What do I mean by light cuirass? Well, take a look at this image here. As you can see, uh, this Celt Iberian, he's wearing a type of disc-shaped cuirass plate armor. In fact, this type of armor was extremely light and extremely usable. In fact, it protected mostly the entire body, especially the stomach and including the chest area. And well, there is sometimes even uh, backplate designs, and this type of armor plate is not just known to Iberia, but also used to the regions of the Etruscans, the, Sam the Samnites, and including many parts of the Middle East. However, the Celt Iberians who created this created a type of armor that was impressively different compared to that. In fact, it's even stated the Celt Iberians would have used two types of shields, one a uh, type of large, elongated buckler or a type of scutum-like shield that the Romans might have copied off of. However, it's also stated that the Celt Iberians would have also used a type of helmet that of which was a lot different compared to other helmets. In fact, when we think of a Celtic helm, we think of a Celtic warrior wearing something like, well, technically like that from Gaul. However, it's actually stated that the Celt Iberians, however, manufactured a type of helmet, uh, which was technically combined with their Celtic Gallic brethren helmet, and as well from a Corinthian helmet from, well, Greece, of which some historians are wondering how they managed to do this in the first place. Some historians do, despite stating that it might have actually been because of the Celt of the Carthaginians that actually the Celts might have adopted it from. Now, also when we take a look at this, the Celt Iberians would have actually done extremely impressive weaponry. Now, one of their most famous weapons would have actually been not just one, not just two, but three types of armored weapons. Now, this type of first one would actually be my favorite, the Falcata. In fact, the Falcata is pretty much one of my biggest favorite uh, ancient weapons out there, of which the Falcata was actually used by more than just the Celtiberians. It was used by the Greeks, it was used by the Carthaginians, it was used by the Etruscans, in fact, it was technically used by all the Mediterranean, including early Rome. In fact, it's even stated because of this weapon, it this weapon was actually manufactured to actually break the body underneath mail. And while the Gladius, on the other hand, which was also created by the said Celts of Iberia, it's actually stated that by this image here, the Celt Iberians actually created this sword to thrust through mail. And of which this armor design was incredibly diverse, and of which we could see why the Romans adopted it. However, the third weapon that the Celts of Iberia created, the Romans later on adopted, would be the Pelum. That's right, the Romans adopted the Pelum from the Celts. Of which I'm not surprised. However, if we think about it, this Pelum, as you could see from this Celt Iberian warrior, is a lot different compared to the later Roman design model. 
However, it is stated though that Celt Iberians actually did have a diverse military design and culture. In fact, most of their entire military force that was mainly meant for uh, formation fighting actually were to said to have used their tower shields, while the skirmishing units would have had small buckler shields, of which would have used of which were the type of warriors who were stated to have actually used the said pilum. However, let's get back to another version. In fact, it's stated that the Celtic variants would have sometimes used uh, the hides of sheep, for example, as a type of cushioning unit when they're wearing their plate armor. However, there are some other details of how this might have been used. In fact, it's even stated in this image here, as you can see, they would have also used a form of cuirass armor that would have been made of mostly scales, including actually sewn into a hard leather fabric that would have actually been boiled, which is really cool by far. However, the Cult of Iberians would have also created a type of helmet that is very weird also, of which is technically not made of steel, but actually made from rawhide and including goat hairs and technically is like a thick version of a padded arming cap. Now, as you can see, this warrior right here on the far right as you can see, he's actually wearing what you might call a cushioned leather, a type of cushioned fabric inside his hat. In fact, this type of helmet would, as many of y'all might call not a helmet, in truth is a type of helmet by far. In fact, this was actually able to stop even a Falcata sword from falling onto its head, which is really impressive. In fact, it's even stated that a Roman legionnaire during the time of the Carthaginian Wars of Rome stated to have actually only managed to thrust this said sword at least about an inch or so into the said fabric. However, it did not work. In fact, he, the warrior did die, but the thing is, the sword failed to actually go all the way through, meaning this sword was strong enough to technically stop a gladius thrust. Now, however, that actually is stating something, but it's even stated that the Celts of, in the northern regions of modern-day Greece, or north of Greece, would have actually worn different type of armor. In fact, it's stated that they would have worn a type of version of Lionel Thorax, that of which would have been near identical to the said Greek design that Alexander the Great would have used. However, this model would have sometimes been made out of leather and as well the linen, of which would all be glued together. In fact, it would be strips of linen glued together, then technically a coating of leather, of which would have been boiled as well, and then another coating of said well, line of linen. This type of armor would have actually been extremely impressive by far. Because as you can see in this image, this shows a very good example of what that armor might have looked like. However, this image here also shows something else of what it might have looked like. However, it's also showing a, a northern Keto Greek warrior, I want to call him, wearing a type of modified early Gallic helm, and of which this was really impressive. Now, we don't get that much information on what they would have worn or used. However, some historians do state that they might have used, still used uh, oval-like tower shields, or as well hexagonal tower shields, short swords, and long swords, and sometimes even uh, the uh, Zikfos or even the Vakata. However, we're still not clear of what they would have used. But still, this is really impressive uh, by far of what they might have looked like. But now, let's also talk about the Celts of Britannia. Now, it's actually stated that the Celts of Britannia did not exactly adopt the same type of arms and armor as their Celt, uh, their Celtic brethren in Gaul, but would have actually worn technically nearly the same. In fact, it's stated that, as you can see in this image, the Celts would have actually worn a Kulis helm. Now, if y'all don't know what a Kulis helm is, a Kulis helm is technically a Celtic design model, that of which sometimes had cheek pieces, or cheek guards, as some people call them, or sometimes did not, as this image shows, and of which would even have a elongated back neck flap, of which, as you can see, would have actually helped the person's head from getting cut. Now, it's even stated that the Celts of Britannia would have actually most of the time used long swords or including short swords, depending on their said region. And I'm technically talking about both the Picts and including the Southern Britannic people. However, the Irish Celts are still stated to have actually probably used this armor up until the medieval period, so I'll include them as well. It's stated that the Celts of Britannia might have mostly used padded armor overlayered with leather, which is really impressive, seeing as though they still kept to their ancestral ideal. 
However, sometimes they did use mail, but did not sew it in. However, this is still in general might have been just used by the Celts of Gaul, rather than the rest of the entire region. However, it is stated though that the Celts of Britannia would have actually adopted their Gallic brethren's ideal model, mainly during the time after Rome conquered Britannia. In fact, it's stated that when they did this, it's actually stated the Celts of, of Britannia actually later on adopted and later on used the said armor for elongated of time. In fact, as I stated, it would have been a mixture of padded armor, riveted mail, scales, including even boiled leather armor of which were all sewn together, and doing so, this armor, as I stated before, was incredibly hard to penetrate. And as well, this armor would have actually been used by the Celts from the very late of the Bronze Age period, all the way leading up to practically the Norman Conquests of 1066, which is really impressive of how long this armor lasted compared to other armors throughout history. So yeah, this armor was impressive by far. Now, the Celts of Iberia would have mostly used oval-like shields rather than hexagonal or any other type. So, yeah, so it's kind of hard to explain that part. Now, it is even stated the Celts of Britannia have actually created the type of helmet that we call today as the uh, chieftain helmet, of which, if y'all none of y'all understand what a chieftain helmet is, here's this image of what it looks like. Now, this helmet was not used for warfare, it was used for ceremonial purposes, along with sometimes the plate armor. However, most of the time, this plate armor was later on discarded for ceremonial purposes in general, and was just used with the helmet. In fact, the chieftain helmet is really cool armor. However, as I state, this is not a helmet, this is not meant for warfare, this is meant only for ceremonial purposes, so I wouldn't technically call it a helmet for defending your head, I would just call it a parade-like helmet. In other words, I would call it a helmet that's just meant for showing off. Now, if you're all wondering, are any of these in iron? No, most of these are always made in bronze, so you're kind of out of luck. And this is technically an entire hollow design. In fact, it's actually stated that these helmets would have actually been worn, not to just show off, but actually to show a form of peace. In other words, as you could see, one horn area of which a Celtic chieftain would have held, while the other horn would have actually been used for the other person to hold on to, say like a Roman governor or another Celtic tribe, this showing a form of friendship and peace. However, this would have also been used as a form of drinking. In fact, some historians actually discovered that the little nipple area were actually could even unscrew the tip, which is really cool, of which showing that you drink, I drink, we drink together. And now finally, that brings me to the Celts of Dacia. Now, a lot of people don't conclude Dacia is a Celtic region, but in truth, they were. Now, as we can tell from this image, the Celts of Dacia would have actually created impressive armor, and of which, this armor was really cool. In fact, take a look at this helmet. As you can see, this helmet is elongated upwards, and of which is a technically a mixture between a Celtic-type helmet from Gaul mixed in with a crested helm. In fact, this was a Celtic crested helmet that evolved into this model, and which, as you can see, is really cool by far because it has this in general touch to it. In fact, it swerves this type of upward design to stop downward cuts. In fact, remember the Celtic Hallstatt crested helm? I bet you do. Because that's what turns into this model, and of which, as you can see, it has different designs to it. And now, these type of helmets were incredible by far. However, the most impressive weapon that the Celts of Dacia would have created would have also been the Celtic Falx. Now, there have been two forms of Falxes. There have been the one in the two-handed version. Now, it's actually stated the Celtic Dacians would have actually impressively used this weapon the full efficiency, especially during the, the Roman Dacian Wars, of which the Romans got slaughtered by this Dacian weapon, mainly because of the weapon itself of the Falx piercing through the Roman helmet and in the process killing them. In fact, the power on these weapons were so devastating that it was nearly impossible to stop the blow. In fact, it's even stated that Roman shields were impressively destroyed because of this weapon. In fact, the Dacian Falx could actually go through the shield and downward all the way to the said forearm. In other words, technically cutting off the person's hand. Now, it is stated, though, that the Dacian Celts would have actually also used 
oval-like shield, but actually these oval shields were smaller and lighter than their Celt Iberian brethren's design, and of which would have actually been helpful for the battlefield, but not so much for, for protection on the on the field. However, it is stated though the Celt Iberians would have mostly had armor mixture of padded mail and scale, of which is still impressive by far. Now as well though, they would have also had sometimes padded and scale or something else in general. But most of the time, their weaponry was always the falx, a short sword, and a spear. Now, these are really impressive arms and armor, if you ask me. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, put a thumbs up for this video. And as well, also put down in the comments of which arms and armor that you like the most from this. And I'd like to hear of your entire armor set you like the most, my, myself. Because myself, I approve of the Celtic Chieftain armor, of which I do love the most. And of which, as you can also tell, the armor, as you want to know more about it, I will leave links down below if you all want to look up any more about this. And as well, I will also leave links down below of uh, videos on uh, armor penetration with these said weapons that would have been used. If you all are happy to do so, ooh, and see them yourself, because I've seen these videos myself, and they do a really good job at them. And as well, also guys, also check out our Facebook, also like and subscribe, and also comment down below of what you want me to cover during the Celtic Month. Anyways guys, this has been Templar, have a great day.